This is the story of Dr. John Sullivan, a man who sacrificed many parts of his life for World War II. Dr. Sullivan was in the Navy from 1944 to 1947. During these years, he was in Sampson, New York, Virginia Beach, North Carolina, Guantanamo Bay, and finally Japan. John first went to training camp in Sampson, New York for 12 weeks. In order to do this, he had to leave his college career and entire family behind in Springfield, Massachusetts. It was at Sampson Naval Air Base. It was on the Finger Lakes up in New York. It was south of Geneva, New York. Uh, it's, um, it was on a lake. It was, we went up there some in the middle of November. It was snowy and cold. And uh, we had a hike around. We were in the barracks with a hundred people, I think, were in our barracks on one floor. And then upstairs, there was another kind of another company of recruits, and we had 10 weeks to become Navy seamen. During training camp, John would write an average of five letters a day to his friends and family back home. In one of his earlier letters to his family, John described a typical day at the training base. I get up at 5.15. They announce revel over the loudspeaker system. At 5.30, we have our cleaning detail. Eat at 6, come back to the room, wash and clean the room by 7. Then 8 to 11, we have classes. 11 to 12, we eat. Then after, we have marching practice. 12 to 2, we have physical training. 2 to 3, we have swimming. And 3 to 4, we have rifle practice. 4 to 6, we have more classes. Then 6 to 8, we eat. Then 8 to 10, we have nighttime swim lessons and rifle practice. After training, they kind of, they uh, gave you kind of screening test to decide of what you were suited for. And they sent me to Norfolk, Virginia. And I learned how to be a radar operator. So I operated radar machines that could check on airplanes or check on ships uh, that were uh, around. After Norfolk, John went to Virginia Beach in North Carolina for four weeks. He went to both places to train more with the radar equipment. After North Carolina and Virginia, John went to Texas with the rest of his squadron where he could finally put his radar skills to the test. A brand new destroyer had just been built in Orange, Texas, so John and his squadron went down to test it out at various Navy bases. New destroyers were coming out more and more often because they required less space to be built than the battleships. The ship was brand new, so we went on what they call a shakedown cruise. We went out to Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, which was a Navy base, and we go every day, we kind of go out, and they'd be firing the different guns and uh, trying different things, seeing, trying out all the equipment on the ship to make sure it worked right. And we had about a six-week shakedown cruise. When we left the East Coast, we had orders to go to Pearl Harbor and go out to toward Japan, toward Okinawa. And partway toward the, uh, in the Caribbean, when we're going toward the Panama Canal, we go to Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. We got word it was August, and uh, the Japanese had surrendered, and the war was over. Even though the war was over, John ended up going back to Japan with his squadron. Of 45, and uh, we went to Pearl Harbor. Then we went out. There were 12 destroyers in our squadron. We went to Japan. We had a typhoon, I guess, when we were going there, and the waves were huge. We're kind of going up and down. The, the uh, destroyer was about 30 feet long, and you go up and down the waves. Mm -hmm. it was, the waves were so big. We got to Yokohama in Tokyo Bay on Christmas Eve of 1945. We were in Yokohama for about almost two or three months, I think. Well, we were kind of there as, I guess, peacekeeping, but basically uh, we were just kind of there physically doing, physically being there without really doing anything. John may not have realized what he was doing in Japan then, but in hindsight, it's clear he was stationed there to prevent the spread of communism. Tokyo was about 20 miles north. We took a train up to Tokyo from Yokohama and walked around there and uh, I saw the emperor's uh, kind of castle or the emperor's house, 
and the emperor's house is kind of all built, and there was a big hedge around it, and then there was a moat of water around it. Here is the emperor's house on one side. You look down the other side, and back going, you know, 15 blocks, everything had been burned down. The incendiary bombs that the arm of the Air Force had dropped had burned everything in Tokyo. There was no, nothing standing, no buildings, no houses, mm -hmm. nothing standing. They all had been bombed, but they had been careful and not to drop anything on the emperor's palace. So the Emperor's Palace never got bombed, but a lot of Tokyo got just uh, bombed and destroyed by fire with the incendiary bombs that they put on them. Dr. John Sullivan entered the Navy not knowing what was going to happen to him. He went into training camp when he was just 18 years old, barely an adult. He left his entire college career behind and spent the next three years serving his country. While being a radar operator was not necessarily a dangerous job, he could have easily been assigned to go and fight directly in Germany or Japan. Dr. Sullivan's story is much like many of the men who served during World War II. They may not be war heroes, but each man did their part which led us to victory. <laughs>